Hi, everybody. Uh, so the demo that we're going to giving, be giving out there today is what we call an open data visualization space. Uh, it's a small project that we've been developing here at Caltech. I've been doing it by myself. It, <laughs> Go for it. It's in line. Uh, it, uh, I've been doing it about uh, part time. And basically, we're, it's lots of the concepts that have been talked about today. We're trying to condense it into an environment. Uh, it's a virtual reality environment uh, that actually augments what my office looks like or my, or my lab space. Uh, and you actually, if you reach out, you actually feel the counter. If you were in my office, you actually feel it, which gives a really nice sense of presence. Um, it basically has the ability to drop uh, about six different kinds of formats of data into a folder, and automatically they become available to you in the virtual reality environment. Uh, we scale the data to exist in three different spaces. Uh, again, we expect people to be sitting down on a chair with their workstation in front of you. Uh, and as you're sitting down, you have a small desktop version of the data set right there on your right. Uh, some of the work that we're doing has very much a physical aspect to it. Uh, so the ability to understand the 3Dness of it and then going back and launch your new Python command that does some kind of data analysis and then you look back at it and you see how it morphs or it changes or any, anything about the physical uh, geometry of it, how it's, it's persistent in the same location, that is a plus for us. Uh, so again, the idea that, that we're talking about of, of this uh, AR system that's going to exist in 10, 15 years where you can basically switch between AR and VR. That's what we're trying to mimic right now in VR environment. Uh, some of the models that we'll see, uh, we have the C elegance from uh, 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 Paul Sterberg's lab. Uh, what's awesome about the C elegance worm is that there's about 998 cells in it, and we know exactly what each cell does. So there's this huge database of everything about each of the cells. So looking at a 3D model of it is, is amazing. Um, uh, you can look at it again at a desktop uh, size, or you can drop it on the floor. It becomes uh, uh, something you can actually walk around, or you can just throw it out the window, and it becomes what you could get monument size, and you can just wheel it towards you, and you can actually step inside of it. Um, it we actually have the complementary screen in there that actually interacts with the actual worm base. You can go to wormbase.org and search for any gene that you like. Uh, this is uh, uh, a, a newer version of it, uh, and you can actually look at also and go uh, Im immerse yourself in the data. Uh, some of the early sets that we have there as well are 3D DNA, uh, so some work from Mitch Gutman. Uh, so the idea of how DNA actually coils in itself and the positions where the chromosomes are actually in close proximity to each other are quite important. Uh, and that's something that's cutting edge and we're just trying to figure out how do genes do things uh, and the proximity, how important that is. Uh, so we have a, that data set as well. Uh, and the final work that we, uh, we're gonna be showing is some work that I'm doing with Matt Thompson in computational biology. Uh, and they basically ha are trying to do single cell studies. They have a, about 100,000 cells for humans. And each of the cells, we have about uh, 20,000 uh, gene markers. Uh, and basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out, okay, how do each, each of these cells relate to each other? So start building clusters of them. Uh, so we're creating an interface that actually, on a portal, you can actually start looking, interacting with your data. You can say, okay, figure out uh, the tree that actually comes up with the different types of, of cell structures. That way we can match you know, actual patients to one of these modalities and say, okay, now this kind of patients do react to this kind of cancer treatments or do not react well to this kind of cancer treatment. Um, and the key to it is that once you do the data analysis of this, just the first uh, principal component analysis actually give you these really nice physical structures as a 3D scatter plot. Uh, and again, what's awesome here is that there's 3D, three, uh, three very clear small branches and a big branch, and the 2D image, you cannot see this, right? If you had your mouse and you spin it around, you would see the shapes. And then when you go back to your heat map and highlight or look something on your heat map, you look back, if it was a 2D image, you would lose automatically the sense of which points were in front of which. If you were doing this in an augmented reality or a VR environment like we're doing, that's persistent there. If you highlight something and you move around, you know exactly where that little branch of your 3D scatter plot is supposed to be. Uh, so that was a big plus, and that's something that uh, we're actually going to be showing. Uh, so uh, join me, uh, and um, hopefully um, we can get to you. Thanks. My name is Ciro, and uh, I'm CTO and co-founder of Virtualytics. For the last 15 years, I've been working mainly on machine learning and immersive visualization, 10 of which at Caltech. So, okay, I can just go without slides. I'll be showing just a video. So I have a, I have a few slides, but really talking about VR, sometimes it's like talking about Joconda. I mean, you can understand it only if you like experience the, the painting. 
And so we'll have a demo later, and you can, uh, you can, uh, you can join us. OK. So it also leaves me, I want to go quickly, just because I really want to start the demo. It's many of you. I would like to get as many as feedback as possible. And because all of you are very experienced in VR and AR, so this is a nice crowd. Then I have also two announcements. So all day, Jonathan has been like testing us, because if you see our setup, it's like four machines, 20 cables, because this is Oculus setup for now. So I went to the office, and this is a, like a pet project that now is reality. It's like a sort of a surprise project. Even the head of engineering doesn't know about it. So this is basically our app running on a tablet. It's 3D, done in Unity, nice 3D. You can click a button and go in VR using a Samsung Gear. So instead of carrying a VR-ready uh, laptop, headsets, you can actually do demo and your work carrying this and this. Plus, of course, the VR, VR. That is very, very small. Now, to explain the virtual ethics, I'll play just a video. Now, bear with me, this video, there's audio. Bear with me, this video was done by our engineers, and it's called For Chiro, Please Do Not Share. But I shared anyway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's the only thing. Yeah. yeah. And then the uh, last announcement is that in March, we will be having our first commercial release, official. But we will be giving like free licenses for academia. So if any one of you is interested, just shoot us an email, and we can arrange that. Because you need to buy the hardware. We'll just give you the software. Yeah, yeah and that's pretty much. So I'll see you later. So at Naftec, I mentioned that we have this really cool hurricane demo, and you get to go down into Hurricane Matthew. And that's really exciting, except we were doing a major presentation at Goddard, NASA Goddard today for a science event, so I wasn't able to travel with any demo equipment. So I'm going to show you a quick video, and I apologize that you're not going to actually get to experience it, um, but I'd be happy to come back at some point um, and set up a demo here and let everybody try it out. Um, so this is a video showing you, this is all data. So this is the output of clouds from the GEOS model that they run at Goddard. And then what we have layered on top is the point cloud from Hurricane Matthew. And we've developed an interface to allow you to zoom yourself down into the data set so you can walk around in the data, you can use your hand to create the layers and slices that scientists typically look at. And then this is a proof of concept for a data selection tool to be able to subset the data itself. So this was feedback from scientists and re researchers saying that what would be really useful in virtual reality would be to identify an anomaly and then be able to select that and then send the numerical values back to some sort of a back end for more processing. You'll also see that the base maps are being changed we're actually using Esri's ArcGIS software as a backend to host and query the data, and then using some of the features that are available. The reason we made that decision is that ArcGIS is sort of an industry standard across many agencies like FEMA and NOAA. So we wanted to create something that wasn't just reinventing the wheel, but would be a way for people to use something that was familiar to them, but to expand that functionality. There was a quote once that said, um, writing about music is like dancing about architecture. So uh, trying to do a, a virtual reality demo um, 
you know, on a flat screen is not really possible, but, and many of you are not going to be able to get through to see the demo here. So uh, I'd encourage you to, to um, visit WorldwideTelescope.org. It's a product that originally came from Microsoft Research and now is run by the American Astronomical Society and completely uh, fully open source. It has um, the original Windows only version, uh, but then we have a, a full WebGL based client that's eventually going to support AR so that you can actually uh, pop in, or, or VR, so you can pop in a Web VR and uh, be able to use it in your augmented reality glasses. That will be down the line at some point. Um, but the, uh, in, uh, the interface itself allows you to you know, zoom in uh, anywhere on the sky or fly in 3D anywhere in the universe. Uh, but this environment, once you translate it to VR, it, it can become a completely different experience. And so I'm showing you this interface so that when, you, when we come in later um, and, and actually uh, go take a look at the demo, uh, that you'll be able to kind of see that, you know, this has got UI Chrome around it. It's got, you know, uh, check boxes and uh, tree views and all sorts of things like that. And all this is going to go away and turn into more of a transparent experience. But then, to a certain extent, some people want to be able to use tools in the environment that they're sort of comfortable with. And people are comfortable with, you know, having a little cell phone with them or a tablet. And so, uh, while uh, this is going to get meta, it's sort of like uh, uh, Inception, you know, a dream within a dream. So we're, the, the demo is going to consist of you sitting in a virtual reality environment where you just kind of feel like you're in nature, um, looking at the sky, and then using a worldwide telescope UI running on a virtual tablet pointing at the sky to identify objects. And so that's the, um, there's also a demo you can fly through the whole universe, but uh, given the time limitations of trying to get as many people through as possible. Uh, but the other, other aspect is you can download all of this code and work with it. We have full GIS capabilities, FITS files, um, VO tables, VO client on it. We have the web version of it, VR version and desktop versions. And if you um, want to do even visualization of orbit trajectories and um, spacecraft and then be able to create multimedia experiences where you can actually author pathways and add music and content and things like that. You can actually produce like a Discovery Channel style um, uh, interactive um, or narrative that then people can stop and, and go interactive on it anytime they want. So that's my pitch. Come see the demo. Just want to let you guys know that I uh, put on another head of mind. Um, I also manage a project called Solar System uh, Trek Project, T R E K. So the project provides a family of web portals that provides um, a suite of um, data visualizations and also analysis tools so that specifically, you know, in support of mission planning and also scientific research as well as public outreach. So um, through those portal, you will be able to explore different planets such as Mars, Moon, Vesta. Um, we are working on Titan um, and also icy moons and Phobos and whatnot. Um, and as if you through the uh, eyes of the uh, different instruments from the past and also current missions. So you'll be able to go look at the data in 2D and also in 3D. So what we are going to demo um, in the library, a couple of my team members, uh, Richie Kim and Sean Mohautra will be there. To be able to show you is that you get on the web portal um, as long as you have a phone and also a, um, a pair of goggles, could be a cardboard, and could be high-end you know, uh, Oculus or um, Gears. Uh, whatever goggles that you might have with your phone, you would be able to view the, um, the data sets that we have and be able to fly over the surface of the uh, different planets. So I encourage you to go check it out. Um, and you know, if you don't want, like VR, you can actually just go to the, uh, the, the website, you bring up a web browser and be able to bring up those web portals. Um, they are moon, T-R-E-K, moontrack.jpl.nasa.gov, MarsTrack.jpl.nasa.gov and Vester.jpl.nasa.gov.
JPL. That's the track.jpl.nasa.gov. So I hope you will have the opportunity to come by and check out the demo. So I think that's all the demos that uh, we will have at the library. And um, I think this is pretty much the end of the sessions. Um, thank you all for attending.